Welcome to BizTax Technology Show. Our guest for today is Nguyen Xuan Fong. He's the Chief Artificial Intelligence Officer at FPT Software. FPT Corporation is Vietnam's largest IT service provider, offering a, a range of technology services and solutions across 50 countries around the world. Now, to tell us more, Dr. Fong, welcome to the show. Hello, everyone. It's an honor to be here today. Now, Dr. Fong, for a start, could you just give us a broader overview of F FPT Software and your role within the company? Sure. So uh, FPT Software is a subsidiary, a cheering company of uh, FPT Corporation, a global IT and uh, digital transformation service uh, provider headquartered in Vietnam. Uh, overall, we have around 27,000 uh, employees and we appear in uh, 28 countries. Um, FPT Software um, is uh, helping a lot of company uh, doing digital transformations. And um, we have offered a variety of services in IT, uh, including uh, data analytics, artificial intelligence, hyper automation, uh, cloud services, and of course, uh, my job is to bring AI to all the client or around the world. Okay, we're gonna zoom in on AI in this conversation here, uh, Dr. Fong, and it is the next leapfrog in technology. Someone like you is in the forefront of it. You did your PhD in the University of Tokyo, your master's at Carnegie Mellon, but then give us an overview of the AI research and development landscape and ecosystem in Vietnam. Perfect. So uh, even though I am uh, the chief artificial intelligence officer of FPT software, which is kind of a new title, actually, um, it's to emphasize like how much the company have value artificial intelligence in the strategy and it's in its business and technology. So uh, even though I'm, I'm a chief AI uh, of FPT headquarters in Vietnam, but I base in, uh, in Canada. Uh, North America. Um, so the uh, the dynamics of artificial intelligence uh, is actually happening a lot in North America. And that's the reason why I am staying here, closing to the source of innovation of, uh, of uh, top-notch research and top uh, production around the world. And I bring all of that back to Vietnam and back to my team of research and solution team in Vietnam for them to catch up with all the newest and the update, most updated technology here. And so this is part of your overall cooperation with Canadian Artificial Intelligence Research Institute, Mila, right? So, so tell us about this cooperation and then how this extends to your team in Vietnam. Sure, so actually Mila is the, the largest research institute based in Montreal, Canada. Uh, the, uh, the largest deep learning research institute uh, with more than a thousand uh, researchers in here, uh, day and night researching about the most advanced architecture of neural networks. And it led by one of the prestigious researchers in the world. Um, his name is Joshua Banjo. Uh, he won the Turing Award in 2018. And in our uh, domain of uh, computer science and IT, Turing Award is like the Nobel Prize for the, uh, for the scientist. So uh, he, uh, Joshua Benjo is called the godfather of AI. Um, so we all respected him, all respect him. And uh, he, he, uh, he provide a lot of consultant to uh, researchers all around the world. And FPT is very lucky to become one of uh, Mila's partner. And uh, from the help of Mila, uh, we build research team, follow uh, the guide of Mila, and we're also building one of the largest AI research center in Vietnam uh, with Mila's consultation. Okay, tell us about this AI research hub uh, that you're building in Vietnam. What are the goals, objectives, and, and what sort of size of, of, of the hub is it? Sure. So. Um, the, the largest uh, FPT AI research hub in Vietnam is going to be built in uh, one of the city uh, in the middle of Vietnam called Quy Nhơn. So Vietnam was pretty well known for uh, 
tourism. So uh, the people usually go to Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh City, uh, but uh, not many people heard about Huy Nhon. It's actually a seaside city, a very beautiful uh, seaside city. It, uh, um, uh, we went to build uh, a, a large uh, complex uh, for research and development, as well as for training for around 20,000 tech uh, uh, personnel in a year. And we're going to invest uh, almost a hundred million. So to be exactly the number is $85 million uh, to the complex so that we can um, bring up a lot of talents, both from the local of Guinean because they have one of the best math program in the, in the nation, as well as we're going to bring a lot of uh, international researchers from all over the world to Guinean to enjoy a beautiful uh, beach city. So uh, that is our plan. Now, this sounds really, really exciting. Obviously, it's a very strategic move. It's a very large investment. What are the specific projects that you are looking or, or key areas that you're looking to work on in this particular research hub? Well, um, there's AI nowadays, they have so many uh, applications. Um, the technology has been uh, helping human to improve a lot of productivity, uh, improve our user experience with the digital world. And uh, with FPT software, we uh, have been serving so many clients in different domains from manufacturing to healthcare to energy and so on. So uh, we, if we have to pick one, it's going to be very difficult. So um, in, in the collaboration with Mila uh, at the moment, uh, we are having a few research topics going on. And uh, those are all very strategic uh, research. Uh, the first one is called the thinking system too. Uh, it is a technology uh, for AI to reason, to think, to understand cost and effect, just like human. And that most of AI now, they cannot do it. The second uh, topic is uh, we are doing a lot of research in massive 3D vision called point cloud data. So, uh, most of the camera nowadays only take 2D images. So with uh, upgrade in the hardware, we can take 3D images with point cloud, with LiDAR, for example. Uh, we can use AI to process another dimension in the pictures and understand much more and richer context of the image. And the final and the most strategic topic we are collaborating with Mila is called AI for software. And like our name, the company FPT Software, you understand that how software is important to us, right? Software we, is literally the core, right? Exactly. And uh, this used to be a say, uh, software eating the war. And now it's actually AI is eating software. <laughs> so uh, we are building a lot of algorithms of artificial intelligence to help our developers to write software, better quality, faster speed, and um, with more, much more user developer experience, much more better developer experience. So uh, that is gonna be one of the top three topic we're going to invest in the uh, AI research hub uh, in Guinean. And we're going to need a lot of efforts from researchers all around the world. We hope to recruit and uh, put, in, put them into a very beautiful uh, beach city where they can enjoy you know, uh, the sceneries as well as the great, great local food over there. Now, Dr. Fong, one of the key things is this, the plan sounds really good, very ambitious. Where do you plan, besides Canada, obviously, where you are based and, and you have that co collaboration with Mila, where else are you looking to recruit researchers from around the world to go to this new facility? Well, uh, for, of course, uh, international researchers are very welcome. 
to visit and to uh, work with FPT software um, in Guignon, uh, in, in our new uh, re AI research hub in the future. Um, we looking uh, at the you know a, a, a vast uh, area, and we we hope to achieve high diversity and great inclusion. So um, I know that talents all around the world in AI uh, sometimes they concentrate quite a lot in North America, but we also found out that you know in some regions people are very very good as well. For example, in Eastern Europe. Uh, uh, the talents in Eastern Europe are, uh, are really good at math and uh, they really love uh, the country of Vietnam. And I also found out that the Southeast Asia, a lot of uh, uh, neighbor country of Vietnam also have great talents in, uh, in, in artificial intelligence and in AI that uh, I discovered a couple of uh, years ago when I traveled there and meet a lot of researchers. So those are areas that we are looking for uh, in the future to improve our quality of research in the future. Yeah. Now, uh, Dr. Fong, on the flip side of the equation, there's a lot of ethical issues around AI. Now, without asking you anything specific, I want to get your perspective as a leader in this space and how you think society and humans should deal with AI. Holy, I understand your point. Um, lots of people are concerned about the, um, the risk of AI might bring us. Um, lots of researchers, especially uh, my professor in Mila, Professor Joshua Banjo, have mentioned that uh, uh, there's a big, uh, uh, there's, there's actually an existential risk uh, involved with AI if they can take control over human. So that risk is greater than zero. Of course, at the moment, it is still a very small uh, probability. Especially, and I, if you stop me, if, if you don't mind me interrupting, sure. in your first of your three project where is reasoning, which is what humans do now, which machines cannot do. That's the critical path, isn't it? Once AI can achieve that, literally that we have an existential risk. That's very, that's very true. Uh, for many years, Professor Joshua Benjo, Benjo has been thinking and pushing towards uh, an AI that can reason, that can do reasoning. And that is one of the capability that makes AI very different from AI nowadays. And it's true that, uh, like, come back to my statement earlier, uh, the existential rate with AI is a positive number. <laughs> it's not zero. So. Uh, even though nowadays the risk is still very small as we have full control of the machine and of the algorithm, but we actually don't really fully answer all the questions like how these algorithms work. It's like a black box for us, right? And with the rate of, expo uh, of uh, exponential growth of AI development nowadays, uh, it becomes more and more uh, important for us to govern the risk. So that uh, uh, is uh, a lot of uh, people in all over the world, especially the top notch researchers uh, have been conveying. So it's not a fear mongering or something like that, but uh, we need to really aware of uh, the potential risk, especially nowadays, like uh, the latest technology with ChatGPT came out uh, it's already master one of the very important capability of human, which is language. So language is the way we communicate. Language is how we do innovation. Language is how we transfer knowledge from one to another. And language is something that create also uh, myth and legend. So that all human unite and believe give people belief and faith. So AI nowadays are getting closer to the boundary of uh, very, very powerful that human might not control. So researchers and the top leadership is calling for uh, governance and 
uh, regulations around the development of AI and the way we release AI products so that we can ensure AI is used for good, for humanity and for our society and not the other way around. The challenge with all of this is the following, and we've seen this with with especially military related technologies before. The researchers want to do the right thing. The, however, the politicians and the powers that be decide that otherwise, and they want to, uh, nuclear power is a classic example of that. What do you think that the, the regulatory landscape would look like? Is the, the global scientific community already advising governments in terms of how to regulate AI? So um, the governments uh, all over the world are still looking at different angles of how to regulate AI. Uh, some started to uh, you know, regulate in terms of like the use of data and how you can uh, use data for training AI. But I, uh, it's the speed of regulation is not uh, that fast yet. And I think that's, uh, the reason is because uh, many people are concerned that if we limit too much, we are not going to um, uh, enjoy the benefits that AI bring, which is super high productivity for uh, industry, for human to work. So- And, that, uh, and Dr. Pong, that's a very good point because on one hand, we, sh we should be afraid and cognizant that there are dangers. At the same time, you said it quite correctly, we shouldn't limit its development because we already see in some, some states in North America where the states have said, oh, the, the schools cannot use chat, GT, uh, chat GPT and so forth. Essentially, they are limiting the development of those children, whereas kids in other parts of the world are embracing chat GPT and learning to incorporate it into their productivity and development. Exactly. So there's always like the two sides of the coin uh, and depends on what angle you look at it and how you use it. A lot of uh, countries and a lot of uh, school actually teaching the kid how to use chat GPT properly, when to use it, how to use it, and what are you going to do with it is very important. So instead of like uh, forbidding them to use the results of chat GPT, the school nowadays, one of the best schools nowadays are teaching them how to evaluate those results, how to find the fact that support the results came out of chat GPT. And because we still know that we cannot trust the technology 100%, Sometimes it still gives you a hallucination of fact. So uh, these are more critical skills for the kids in the future because uh, this, our society will definitely change with AI and we need to embrace it. At the same time, we need to be well aware of the risks it may bring and do the right regulations at the right time so that uh, we can all enjoy the technology as a society. Dr. Fong, it's been a fascinating conversation. I think I've really learned a lot. Uh, you've opened, opened my mind, certainly, in terms of all the different possibilities and, and set me thinking. But before we leave, any final thoughts you'd like to leave the audience with? Sure. So um, on the journey of embracing AI, there will be a lot of doubt. There will be a lot of thought. So FPT software is a great partner uh, for uh, anyone to trust and to uh, for let, let us help, let us uh, become uh, a partner with you so that we can all solve all the challenging of the society, of the business together with a very powerful technology. Dr. Fong, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you so much, Brian. We've been speaking to Dr. Nguyen Xuan Fong, he's the Chief Artificial Intelligence Officer at FPT Software Vietnam. I'm Brian Fernandez, and you've been watching and listening to BizTech's technology show. This interview will be on our website, www.biztech.asia, as well as our social media platforms.
It'll also be on our syndication partners, TV stations, radio stations, and websites. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Thank you.